Those special shows, it's official. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is officially Manchester United manager. He's been given a three-year contract. Up yours, international break. What a way to kill it. What a way to kill the international break. We're only two, way, two, day, two days away from playing against Watford. We're already feeling excited and we now know we're going into not only these last two months of the season, but the next three years, hopefully the next three years and beyond, to infinity and beyond. I hate Toy Story with Ole Gunnar, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as a manager. Look, I, to I can see both sides here. I can see both sides. Why would you not wait till May? Why would you not wait till May? There's no rush. Having said that, is it really a problem not waiting till May? And waiting till May would have really been about a business decision, whereas I think this is a football decision and we're a football club. So that encourages me as well. Of course, from a business decision, wait till May. What if it all falls apart in April? But I just... I just, I always said this, well I haven't always said it, because to be honest with you, I just want to applaud Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and say, what, um, what, what a great, what, what a great, what a great achievement, I think, I, I just want to applaud that for a start, nobody, nobody would have even mentioned the name Ole Gunnar Solskjaer after that Liverpool result against Mourinho, Mourinho was sacked, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer came in as our manager, and people were like, you know what, let's just enjoy our football again, he's not going to be the manager, maybe it's going to be Zidane, maybe it's going to be Pochettino, who knows it's going to be, but it's not going to be Ole, a month later people are going, bloody hell, maybe it should be Ole, a month after that, it's got to be Ole, a month after that, here we are, he's, it is Ole, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, and, and that's the abiding thing for me, is that he deserves all the praise, he has gone into a job that nobody thought he could do, He's got us back into a, a, a top fight or rate, top top four race, which I totally agree with what a lot of you lot have been saying this week. If we don't finish in the top four, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer hasn't failed. Ed Woodward and Jose Mourinho have failed. It's what happened between August and December that will determine whether we come in the top. If we miss out on top four, it's because of that. If we get into top four, it's because of what Ollie's done. And he's given us a right fighting chance. And I think there is still some people out there saying, oh, it'll be funny. I've seen some Arsenal fans saying, oh, it's going to be funny. They've given him the job and then they go, don't get top four. But as far as I'm concerned, that's not, that's not relevant. It's what he's done in that three months. You can look at the league table and we're top of the league compared to Man City and Liverpool for what we've done in the time Ollie's been here. Irrelevant because we're not top of the league in the real league, but he's done a fantastic job. And I think he's doing a fantastic job with, with the mess that Mourinho left as well. So let's read out the official statement because I think that's what people want to know. Uh, Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer, appointed permanent manager of Manchester United, has been given a three-year contract. Um, Solskjaer, is, um, this is the job that I always dreamed of. This is what Solskjaer said. This is the job that I always dreamed of doing and I'm beyond excited to have the chance to lead the club long term. From the first day I arrived, I felt at home at this special club. It was an honour to be a Manchester United player and then to start my coaching career here. The last few months have been a fantastic experience um, and he's looking to build on that, of course. And then we've also had... Um, I think we've also had comments from uh, Ed Woodward as well. Um, the Norwegian club announced that Solskjaer agreed a new year, three-year deal with them in December and stressed they were only lending their managers to United. That's from Mulder, uh, but apparently, well, that's 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 gone there. But there, there is like um, there is a statement from Manchester United here. There is a statement from Manchester United, and and the first thing that comes to my mind is not necessarily. Um, what we're going to do against Watford and Wolves, and it, maybe it should be, it's what we're going to do in the summer now. We've got a long-term plan. We've had a short-term manager doing a short-term brilliant job. We've now got a long-term manager at Manchester United. The uncertainty disappears. At the start of this international break, there was talk of Pochettino. And, and I tell you what, I think Edward would, did want Pochettino. I think he did, and I think that was always a danger. I think people spoke about it on the international break. If Edward would want Pochettino... Will Ed would, would dead his, uh, dig his feet in and still go for Pochettino? And maybe Man maybe Pochettino wanted the job, maybe he didn't. I don't know. It's irrelevant because we've got Solskjaer now. But I don't. I think it got to the point where they had to give Solskjaer the job. It was. I think a lot of people back in December and January were like, well, if he gets top four, he gets the job. If he doesn't get top four, he doesn't get the job. It's not that simple now. I think even if he didn't get top four, there'd still be a large swathe of United fans saying he, des he does deserve the job. But why does he deserve the job? Because of the things he said there, he, he gets what the club's all about. And we've been crying out for that for six years. We've not had that for six years. Somebody in charge of the club who understands what it's all about. David Moyes was clueless. Van Hal was arrogant. And Mourinho is Mourinho. He just never understood what the club's all about. From day one, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has, 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 has identified what our club is all about. He understands that the fans are intrinsic to this football club. And I know that's a cliche because fans are the lifeblood of football. I've said this before. 
But Manchester United lost touch with the fans. They became this separate entity. They became this business and not this football club. And there has been that gap. Mourinho wasn't good at it. Van Hal wasn't particularly good at it. And Moyes was terrible at it. And the board aren't particularly good at it. That distance was there between club and fans. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has closed that gap. The fans feel part of the club. When you're at Old Trafford, you feel like things are going to happen. Special things are going to happen again. That's why we've had PSG. That's why we beat Southampton. You know, we were sucking the goal into the ball. The ball into the goal. That's what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has done. He also understands what the club's about and the traditions of the club. He's brought up on it. He's probably one of the most educated ex-players about what Manchester United's all about. And he's very humble about it as well. He's not somebody who's in the press gobbing off before he came back. He goes about his job, but boy oh boy and girl oh girl does he understand what Manchester United's all about. The attacking football, the exciting football, the risk-taking football, the, the, the fact that you've got to go and win a game, he gets all that. And, and the fact that he is... He symbolises on and off the pitch now what Manchester United is. He scored the most famous goal of Sir Alex Ferguson's reign, that never give in, that stoppage time winner in a massive final. He could never be what Van Hal has said, which is this part of the bus manager. So it's very exciting. I want to talk about the pitfalls about this. Of course I do, but there's a few contributions coming in. Pradny Wadki says, three-year deal kind of shows the board willing to give him time to build his team. Let's just hope he gets backing in the transfer window. Haven't been this happy in a while. Got tears in my eyes. Oli, oli, oli. It gives us that security. It gives us that continuity. It, it removes that uncertainty. And I think... I, I agree. It's, it's very funny because Gary Neville uh, tweeted this morning saying, I'm really surprised they haven't announced Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I thought they would have done it. Let's hope something happens today. And immediately I thought, something's going to happen today. And when Manchester United announce deals, it's always around nine o'clock in the morning. And it has happened. So Gary Neville obviously had a little bit of a of a nudge that something was going to happen. But it did need to happen. From a, football, from a business decision, I agree. Wait till May. From a footballing decision and from a football fan point of view, because we are quite you know, passionate and on the edge. It needed to happen now. We needed that security going into these big, big games in April and May. You don't want to be losing to Barcelona and it's like, oh, is Solskjaer going to get the job again? Or you maybe lose to City. Oh, is Solskjaer going to get the job? We now know he's got the job for three years. So there won't be this flip-flop reaction after bad results. He's here for three years. If we get bad results in April... We can't flip-flop about it. You can't go, oh, no, let's not have Solskjaer, let's have Pochettino. It removes that, which I think is brilliant. Alex Marmon says, now Oli at the wheel permanently. I just hope the board back him in the transfer market. We need a centre-back, a CDM and a right-winger, ASAP. Tweeted it this morning. Elite transfer window. Koulibaly, Verratti, Sancho. Let's go on our holidays. Um, Greg Hempsell says, makes sense to announce now. Help lay the groundwork to get new players in. Exactly. There's a buzz around us. We need to maintain and draw in players like Sancho. Spot on, Greg. Spot on, Greg. We do need to get these players. We do need to get... The, from a transfer point of view, it makes a lot of sense as well. Do the deal now. Get Solskjaer in place now. Because if if there was uncertainty about whether Solskjaer was getting the job till the end of May, how can you be signing players? Oh, Ed Woodward's signing players. Forget about it. Let's get Ed Wood, let, Let's get Solskjaer in. But it removes, it removes a lot of things. Will we see David De Gea signing a new contract now? Will we see Ander Herrera signing a new contract now? Will we see even Paul Pogba signing a new contract? These are big things that I think may have been considerations for those sort of players. I fully expect Under Herrera to sign a new contract now. I don't think De Gea will be far behind him because where's the uncertainty around Manchester United now? We've got some stability. We've got something to build on and that's really important. Liam Thorpe says, just touching on last night's show, I feel United are in for a centre-back, but are keeping it quiet because we have four to five centre-backs to keep happy and motivated. Yeah, I wouldn't agree. I wouldn't disagree with you on that, mate. Um... Lockie MUFC, hopefully this appointment represents a change in Ed Woodward by listening to his fans, now give him the players he wants so they can re rebuild start now. Exactly, Lockie. I think we've said it before, it really is. I, I, the brilliance of the appointment of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as well is that we can all focus on a very important area at Manchester United now. The players are playing well. They do need a few additions and a few people removing. That's fine. That's normal. We've got a manager and a coaching setup that is absolutely superb. I guarantee Mike Phelan will be staying as well, which is great. You've got Carrick. We're happy with the coaching staff. All eyes go to stage three now. The board, Woodward and the Glazers. What are you going to do? Because you can have a great manager. You can have a great coaching setup. You can have a decent squad. But that's not a title winning squad and manager setup until you give them the players they need. Will they give them the players they need? And that's where our eyes go now and the great thing is Gary Neville said it himself as well if uh, United it's not just about the players and the manager they're at fault but it's also the board there's three areas well I think we've, we're correcting two 
The most important area now is the board. Are they going to back Solskjaer? Jay Parasmath says, I want to give a shout out to Van Rudy. He wanted Solskjaer as our manager and even commented on the video in October when Mark was discussing five managers to replace Mourinho, says Jell. Well, thanks for that, Van Rudy, as well. We'll give you a shout out. But smash a like on the video, everybody. It's not often we get to do these sort of videos where it's an epic moment. It's an epic Thursday. Thursday, the 28th of March, 2019, is the day that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, the morning that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been appointed as Manchester United manager. Buzzing, absolutely buzzing. If you weren't buzzing, if you hadn't had your morning coffee, you don't need it. Injected into my veins, three-year deal, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Manchester United manager. Will he see out the three years? I mean, look, I don't want to talk about this, but this is the United stand. We're always democratic. We're always looking at different points and views. Nikki, uh, Ricky Tucker says, with Ollie at the wheel, do you think Pogba will stay? I mean, these are things that are going to take care of themselves. But what I would say is, and I say this to every Arsenal fan, because they're normally the ones biting, or Chelsea fans, they go, oh, look at Di Matteo, look at Sherwood, name me an interim manager that's been successful. I can't. I absolutely can't. And Di Matteo's always the one that comes to mind. He took over, they won the Champions League, and he was sacked the very next season. There is a bad, bad record of interim managers being given the job, whether it's even like teams like Southampton or relegation teams or teams at the top. There is no real record of, of, of a manager doing it very, very well, having done it as an interim manager. You've got people like Zidane and Pep who get given the job from the backroom staff and they do well. But as an interim manager, to then be given the permanent job, there's there's a very, very poor run of, back, uh, uh, of history of that. However, however... As Manchester United history will, will will testify, you've got to break the mould at some point. There's got to be an interim manager that's going to be successful. And I was aware of this interim manager curse way before, way before. And, and it still doesn't deter me from Solskjaer getting the job. Of course, there's an element of risk. Look, this could all be a big buzz. He doesn't get backed in the summer. Players want to leave, whatever. We go into the new season. We still know we've got the weaknesses that we've got. And we, we're again battling for top four. You know, we maybe slip out the top four. People start to go, this isn't the right manager. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer ends up getting the sack in a couple of years' time. That can happen. Of course it can happen. And let's not let's not go down that route saying, oh, I'll never want Solskjaer to be sacked. Because that's that's naive. This is, this is football. And football is a results game and it's very very rare that you get someone like Sir Alex Ferguson that can just go leave on their terms most managers get sacked so that could happen of course it could and we've got to have our eyes open to that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer isn't an experienced manager this is a big job for him but as I said the positive things are it's not like dropping Pochettino into Manchester United he knows what the club is all about he knows this club he knows the players he's been a youth team coach he's been a player at this club he's got great relationships with experienced people I mean Mike Phelan don't underestimate Mike Phelan he's been there he's done that you know he might be assistant manager and not the manager assistant to the manager but he, he does a very very good job and he will be important and Sir Alex Ferguson's still there this is a Manchester United appointment. This is about getting our club back. This is not a stranger coming in, and I've got no problem with that, but this is the right step for Manchester United. Pochettino, Zidane, whoever, they come in and they're a stranger to the job. They don't really have an affiliation. This is the right appointment. There's no guarantees in football this is going to work, but I have a very, very strong feeling that it will. Um, it might be a... I mean, the big thing I would say is, I want to ask you lot, what's your patience cut off with this? Because I've openly said, for me, the cut off, I'm not expecting to win the title next year. I, I think this has been a brilliant, brilliant three or four months. And if we can get to the semi-finals of the Champions League and we finish in the top four, that is brilliant. But I don't necessarily think that's achievable next year. I think we've got to aim for that. But I think this this period from December to, to, to May is going to be a bubble. It's a, it's almost a make-believe fantasy bubble. We've had some brilliant results and a lot of it's been on determination um, and, and, and just everything's come together at the right time. I think next summer we're going to rebuild and because of that rebuild it might knock us back a half a step to go forward in the long term three steps so for me next season it's about top four again and it's about you know quarterfinals of the champions league minimum and maybe a decent cup run that's what i expect from next season and and, and i'm realistic about that next the season after that Let's get in a title race. So I'm not expecting a title race next season. But I think some United fans will get lost in the positivity and go, oh, yeah, we're doing a title race next year. I don't think we're near a title race. I don't. I think even with three signings, even if we did get Koulibaly, Verratti and Sancho, we could be in a title race next year, but I won't expect it. I think Solskjaer 
it's very important, I believe, and what's my opinion against anybody else's, but it's very important that there is patience with this club now. Patience with what Solskjaer is going to do. I think if we go into it like Mourinho's first year, oh, we can win the league because we've got Pogba, we've got Zidane, uh, sorry, we've got Zlatan and we've got Mkhitaryan and Bay. we can win the league. They're four great signings. Well, they were, but I don't think going into winning a title, I think we've got to be a bit patient with that. MJ Murphy says, director of football next now, please. Backing in the transfer market. Then we're set up for success. It's patience, patience, patience. That's what I feel. Uh, remember to smash a like on the video, everybody. Um, salute, chat and morning, says Rare Rebel. Well, the great thing is a lot of you lot will be waking up to this news. Um, I mean, if you're in America, it's still the early hours of the morning. So you're waking up to this fantastic news that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been appointed Manchester United manager for the next three years. I don't think there is a press conference till tomorrow. Some people are asking about that. So we'll be talking about that tomorrow. Obviously, we'll have the reaction to that. Seamus Fanning, history is there to be made. We are a club with a rich history who are known for breaking boundaries. We finally feel like United again. Bring it on. Yes. And I think that is the thing that really is important as we move into some of your comments about it. Um, Mark, if given the opportunity, we should swap Lukaku for Ricardi, says Hunter Javits. Well, I mean, that's going to take care of itself in the summer. We need consistency from the players. We need to make some harsh decisions, says Odin Midgard. Uh, Paul Robinson says attacking football will be more appealing to signings. Exactly. I think if you contrast, just to touch on signings for a moment, if you touch on the, the contrast that Manchester United... Well, the, the best example is uh, Akanji, the centre-back at Dortmund. He's very open about the fact that he, Manchester United are his club and he'd like to come and play here in the future. But he openly said when Mourinho was manager, I don't even watch them. I, I wouldn't want, you know, negative, even though he's a United fan. That will have changed now. And, and I think these are things that are very important. They're very important. If Mourinho was still in charge, the rumours of the dressing room unrest, the crap football, people are not going to want to come here. Under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, all oh, right, he's an inexperienced manager, but there's a buzz about the club. You know, people want to go and play for Liverpool because they play good football. There's a buzz about that club. There's a buzz about Manchester United. There's always a buzz about Dortmund as well. All right, they're not the biggest club in Germany, but they're, the, the, any player knows that it's a good stepping stone for their career. Manchester United doesn't need to be a stepping stone, though. The buzz is there, but also we're, we need to be a big club again. So that's, that's very exciting as well. Um... Uh, Donald Power says, I've seen something somewhere about a press conference at 4pm. Is that true? Maybe there is. Maybe there is. So if there is, we'll definitely react to that for you. Uh, Ollie press conference at four o'clock says, Ali, Ollie's at the wheel, which is great. Uh, Andrew Samuel says, worst news ever, bring Jose Mourinho back. Uh, it's 9pm in Australia, says Zaka Wassall. Great. great. Well, it's good news for you there, mate. We've got nearly 5,000 people watching, which is great. Um, we have got a press conference coming up at four o'clock. That's been confirmed by George Roper. So we will be live again with you with a reaction to that, which is very, very exciting. Um, according to Manchester Evening News, Ali has identified centre-back, full-back and a striker as the three areas to improve, says Liam Ferguson. I mean, it's all over the place, isn't it? So Ali Gunnar Solskjaer says he wants a centre-back, a right-back and a striker. That neglects the fact that we need a right-winger and a midfielder. So, you know... I ain't too fussed about that. I think that this, as I say, is about continuity. It's about security. And it's about closing off any area of confusion or any ability for the press to sort of delve into United as we go into this big two months. The April and May are going to define where we're going to be next season. And I want to be in the Champions League next year. And I think, you know, if we, if you if you draw at Watford at the weekend, then... Maybe people are going all about Poch. I mean, it helps Spurs out as well. It helps Spurs out as much as it helps us out because they haven't got that concern about Pochettino to United now. He can't go to Real Madrid either. So where realistically is Pochettino going to go? I don't think he's going to go. So Spurs have got Pochettino for another year. But for United, there's no there's no area for people to delve in and start going, oh, he's had a bad result. We might have bad results in April. We might have bad results in May. We might end up in the Emmerdale Cup and we might end up getting smashed by Barcelona. But the fact is, Ole, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will be our manager next season. And I think that's a good thing. Even if we don't finish in the top four, even if we do get knocked out by Barcelona, I still think it's a good thing. You've got to trust this process because it got to the point for me where I always would have wondered what. Even if we finish fifth, and if they'd replaced Solskjaer with Pochettino, I still would have wondered what would have happened if he'd been given a summer, if he'd have been given a season. Because, he, yeah, effectively, he's come into this job mid-season, done a fantastic job, but he's done it with somebody else's squad. And let's not forget as well, the way Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to play football is 
high intensity, quick movement of the ball. You take over a team that's been lazy for two and a half years in relation to the style they've been trained in. Pragmatic, don't cover a lot of distance. He's going to get a whole preseason. He's going to get a whole preseason to move players out, move players in, and start getting this team playing the way they want to play. And I think you'll see a very, very different Manchester United next season to the one we've even seen over the last three months. We won't be picking up these injuries, these muscle injuries. They will be a lot fitter. They'll be a lot motiva more motivated and you'll see a different Manchester United. Stombrani says, congratulations. Excited to see what the future holds. It is exciting and I think the timing is perfect. I think maybe some people thought this was going to be announced a week ago. I think I heard at the start of last week that United were going to do it a couple of days before Watford and, and lo and behold, they have. So whatever outlet reported that, fair play. But it makes total sense to do it now. You get the buzz. It's the perfect time to do it. Tomorrow will be about Watford. It'll be about the press conference in the morning for Watford. Maybe we'll talk about that tonight. I don't know. Hopefully at four o'clock, it's totally about the press conference and, and, and getting the job. But you get that buzz now. We get all that buzz today. We take that buzz into Friday and then we play on Saturday. And Old Trafford has been rocking anyway, but it'll be rocking, rocking even more. And that, that really is positivity um which goes into these next few games which we need we you know we've got to get six points against Watford and Wolves and then we've got that rest before Barcelona so the timing is absolutely perfect and uh, Flex will be out in Australia Matt Johnson he'll be in Singapore and Shanghai as well we've got a few meetups to arrange for that but yes we've got over 5,000 people watching now so smash a like on the video Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is Manchester United manager facts bare facts so get a like on the video get your comments in uh, and let's just enjoy this moment let's enjoy it this perfect moment of Oli Gunnar Solskjaer Manchester United manager for the next three years it's fantastic it's absolutely superb and uh, really 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 happy about it cannot cannot put my happiness into any other way than to say that this is absolutely superb Superb for Manchester United, superb for Manchester United fans. And you know what? I think it's the right decision as well. I don't have any any concerns about it, really. I'm, I'm realistic now. I think I did say this, and I've said it to Paul in the live comments, and thanks for everyone who's joined us on the moderators and everything like that. I did say that I hope we go get Van der Sar as director now too, says James Kang. Well, it'll be interesting to see whether we do go and make signings very quickly now and whether we do get a director of football now. But I, I did say this, I will never again, I think we've. I think with the sacking of Mourinho, it was the end of an era for Manchester United. It was an end of an era of trying to get success quickly. I felt that when Sir Alex Ferguson left Manchester United with the Premier League title, to stop us becoming Arsenal over 10 years without a, a league title, to, to stop us hopefully becoming anything like Liverpool 30 years without a title, we needed to get a title in the bank in that first five years. And we failed. We didn't do it. And I, I was a big advocate of Mourinho because he guaranteed a title in his first two years. And I was, you know, I, almost, I sold my soul as a fan. And I think a lot of us did with Mourinho because it was like, yes, he plays crap football. Yes, he's an egomaniac, but he guarantees a title. And if we can just get another title in the bank after Sir Alex Ferguson, we reset the clock again. And we don't have that pressure on with us. And I think we all... We, Moyes was a terrible appointment as well. I mean, talking about the length of contract that Solskjaer has been given three years. We gave a six-year contract to Moyes. So I think we've learned the lesson there. I, I love Oli, but to give him a six-year contract would have been a mistake. Three years is right. And that's what we should have been doing. Van Hal, I think we hoped that he, he could do wonders for us. But that, that era is over now of bringing these managers in and looking for some almost instant success. And we, that's gone. And for me, I will never say about a manager now, I, I, I'm, they've got to deliver the title in three years. I don't think I'm even saying that about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I'm not saying he's got to deliver the title in three years because I think those days are gone. And, and it's only six years since we won a title for us. But I think it feels so long ago now that that's almost confined to history in the way that Sir Matt, Bus Sir Matt Busby's era was. It's so long ago now. Football has moved on so drastically from when we won the title with RVP and Sir Alex and, and Rio and Vidic and Rooney. It, it's moved on. That's a long time ago. We're in a different era and we can't keep clinging back to that past. We've got to look to the future. And I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer with 
an understanding of what United's all about and our past, we are moving into the future now. And I don't think there are any guarantees, but I'm very excited about it because we're going to move into that future with a brand of football that befits what Manchester United's all about. But I'm not going to put any pressure on it. I'm not going to say he's got to deliver a title in three years because we haven't had a title for six years. We haven't been anywhere near a title since Sir Alex Ferguson as well. So just to be in a title race would be interesting, but we, we may have to go through all that again. We say, oh, Liverpool are going to blow this title because they're not used to a title race. Well, we're not used to a title race. Who in our squad is used to a title race? Nobody. They're all gone. They're all gone. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has never won a Premier League title as a manager. Michael Carrick has never done it as a coach. They're not on the pitch to influence that. So we, we as a club, we might have to get into a title race first to experience it, to then win a title. So I'm very patient about it. I'm very excited about it, and I think it will it will it will stand our it will stand our fans in good stead to be patient. And I think there will be that patience. I think there is going to be that patience. Um, since the Cardiff March, 83 new thousand subscribers to United Stand, says Thomas Gunderson. Well, well observed. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to United Stand, please do. Bottom right hand corner, and smash a like on the video for Ali Gunnar Solskjaer. We should be getting at least 2,000 likes on this video because we've got 5,000 people watching. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be watching and waking up. And the man in charge of Manchester United is Ali Gunnar Solskjaer on a three-year contract. I can't even keep my I can't stop my mouth from moving and smiling. It's fantastic. But patience is a virtue. It really is going to be about patience. And I think the important thing with that patience as well is if we are patient and we, ex you know, we know we've got that continuity now, we know we're building something. If we are patient, the great thing about patience is when the good things happen, you appreciate them more. Like PSG, we were like, if we get, that was so good for us because we weren't expecting it. There was no reason to expect it. There was no pressure to expect it. And if we get top four, we'll really appreciate it. But, and I, I you know, as well, I really do agree United should be going for titles. Of course we should. But it's a journey to get there. And we get laughed at by, well, I'm not going to say City fans because there aren't many, but Liverpool fans and Chelsea fans and Arsenal fans, they laugh at us because we're, we're so excited that we're in a top four race. And of course, that opens us up to banter. I accept that. But the fight back to that is we've only played for half a season. We've we've played half a season. You know on FIFA you can play half a season. That's basically what we've done. One half of a season. Play everybody once. That's basically what we've done under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Everyone else has played everyone twice. They've played a full season. So Man City and Liverpool, fair play. What a title race. Enjoy it. We can't be in that. It's impossible to play for half a season and get in a title race. But Chelsea, Arsenal and Spurs, I tell you what, squeaky bum time. Sweaty Betty. Because you should not have allowed us back into a top four race. So you can banter us about being two points ahead of us because you're third or fourth or whatever. You never should have let us back in because we've only played for half a season. So we will celebrate the fact we're in a top four race. And I said this last night, whoever finishes in the top four, they're going to bloody deserve it. But we probably deserve it more than anybody because we've done it in a half a season. Where we were when Oli took over, we were dead and buried. To get back into it, we deserve it more than Arsenal and Spurs and Chelsea. Whether we get it or not, I don't know. But where, where we've come from to get it, we definitely do. Um, Richard Stark says, I'm disappointed. If you look at the history of caretaker managers who have been appointed full-time, they never do well. I'm worried he'll be sacked by 2020. We've spoken about that, Richard. I can't deny that concern. It's a valid concern. But everything is made to be broken. Every record's made to be broken. That's why they get broken. So at some point, there will be an interim manager who's made full-time manager who does really well. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer could do that. Um, and the, the most important thing about it as well is that if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is successful, this will please some people. Well, they should be pleased that he's manager. But if he's successful, he won't be here for three years. He could be here for 10 years. He could be here for 20 years. That's the exciting thing. We mustn't jump forward and, and start saying that, though. I think the most important thing is that we are patient, we are happy, and we are realistic. Because people will be watching We're around the media, around rival fans. They'll be waiting for this to go wrong and go, ah, ha, ha, look at you lot. Which is where I went wrong with Mourinho. He's definitely going to give us a title in two years. And, it, and we ended up bantered. So I'm not going to say, I'm not going to put any pressure on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I think it's the right appointment at the right time. For the right, and he's the right person for this football club, um, and I firmly believe he will. He will be successful, and then if he is successful, he could be here for a very long time. And what I haven't said as well is that a lot of people wanted Pochettino, and I understand that. 
But what I always said about that when I decided I wanted Ollie, which was around the start of February, is that why would you want Pochettino? Great manager, done very well at Southampton, very well at Spurs, but that's his journey somewhere else. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer could be our Pochettino. He's all right, he's done a little bit at Mulder, terrible at Cardiff, but he's coming to Manchester United. He can be our Zidane, he can be our Pep, he can be our Pochettino, he can be our creation. In five years' time, he can be one of the best managers in the world, and we created him, and he's from our club, and he played for our club. There's no better ideal than that. That's the dream, to have a manager who, who's played for your club, who understands your club, who is Manchester United through and through. The biggest thing of all, he's a Manchester United fan. David Moyes was not a Manchester United fan. Van Hal was not a Manchester United fan. Mourinho was not a Manchester United fan. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is a Manchester United fan. He loves this club. We have got a manager that loves our club. Not uh, Pep's not a Man City fan. He probably is because of his checkbook and his bank balance, but he's not a Man City fan. Emery's not an Arsenal fan. Sarri's not a Chelsea fan. Pochettino's not a Spurs fan. Klopp's not a Liverpool fan. Um, in fairness to Liverpool and Klopp, I think there is a there is a there is a similar thing to Ferguson there, where they brought a manager in who gets what the clubs are all about and loves it. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is a Manchester United fan, and that is a huge, huge thing to have. A huge, huge thing to have. Um, Di Matteo was sacked too early. Well, to be honest, to be fair to Di Matteo, I don't think he was very good. I think it was the players who did that. But also, the other thing about that is that um, Chelsea are a sacking club. I, I think that um, sing Ollie's at the wheel. Ollie's at the wheel. Tell me how good does it feel? We got Pogba and Fred. I don't like Sanchez. Marcus Rashford is Mank born and bred. The kings of our English football. We've won it all. Back of the net. There you go. I don't do the Sanchez bit. Um, what do you think should be Ollie's next steps as Deep Daz? Top four. Top four. Top four. That's that's the, that's surely got to be the next big thing for Manchester United. Uh, I'm very excited about the summer now. Uh, I think this. I think the summer. Just to qu talk about the summer very very quickly. I think the summer was always going to be a very 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 big time for Manchester United, and I think that the summer is something that we probably need to park until um, until next season, of course. Um, but but. Um, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's exciting. Um, and we are in a very, very, very good situation at Manchester United. Look, if people don't... Look, I'll sing, but I don't, I'm not a singer in the ground anyway. I don't like doing it. I'm not a singer. So there you go. If it's crap singing and it's the wrong words, I don't give a shit. I'm very happy that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is our manager. And I don't sing in football grounds. Some people don't. I just It's just not for me. So there you go. As you can see. But um, very, very happy. And um, in relation to the summer at Manchester United, I think that we've got... The planning process, I would hope that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer knew he was getting this job for a while now and the planning process is in place. But even if he didn't, we have we are still in March just and we've got our permanent manager here. So what happens in the summer should be being planned right now. Um, but this summer is massive for Manchester United and I think I'll talk about it, but obviously the focus has got to be the next two months. We've got to focus on winning football matches because then the summer will be determined on where we are. If we're in the, if we're in the Emmerdale Cup, we won't be able to get all the players we want to get and we won't be able to keep some of the players we want to keep. That's a fact. You can still get good players. We did get Pogba when we were in the Emmerdale Cup. But if we're in the Champions League, it will make our job a lot easier. So the next two months will have a big impact on the summer. But when you talk about the summer, it's it has to be the summer that we've been predicting for the last three years. I remember last summer we said, oh, it's going to be amazing. We're going to get rid of these. We're going to get these players in. And we bought two players. Well, Delo came in, didn't he? But... Um, yeah, I can't even remember what happened last summer. Fred and Delo, did we bring anybody else in? I can't even remember. It was such an unmemorable summer. 
Um, and we didn't get rid of enough players either. So that was a crap summer. This summer, you've got to get rid of a number of players. There's got to be at least three players going out the door this summer, and there's got to be at least three players coming in. And that is going to be obviously very exciting. Uh, Heath Farley says, would be awesome to see United stand in Australia for pre-season. Mark, love the channel. No competition. So excited to have Ollie at the wheel. Good times ahead. We're definitely going to be in Australia. We're definitely going to be in Shanghai, and we're definitely going to be in Singapore, and we're definitely going to be in Cardiff, because that's what the United stand does. We're a fan channel. We're there to be getting your voices and having your say. Bring back Moy, says Ollie Richards. Uh, is feeling confirmed as well? Uh, he hasn't been confirmed yet. I, I almost feel that he... Um, I mean, GI says... J.I. says top four is a must for players to stay and come in. Um, but the the most important thing is that... Um, that, that, that we... You know, getting top four is really, really important. I would almost say as well that you need to, uh, that, um, thanks for telling me about that, Marcus, the audio dropped a little bit, that um, I will be doing career mode today, clunky ice, that Phelan almost needs to be appointed on his own. Yeah, that's that's what I think with him. He needs his own appointment. There is a press conference at four o'clock for Arling Gunnar Solskjaer, which I will watch, and then we'll do a reaction to that as well, which will be very, very exciting. Um... Pep is sweating. Well, I don't think Pep or Klopp are sweating at all. I think United's journey back to the top is going to be an interesting one. And we must have patience. Uh, Kieran Byrne, I don't know why you were timed out, but you're back. Uh, Phelan has to be confirmed, says Ryan Pierce. I, I think Mike Phelan almost deserves a couple of minutes himself. Mike Phelan has been intrinsic to what's gone on at United. He to uh, Ollie's at the wheel. Ollie, Ollie's at the wheel, 100%. And he's the one who's making the decisions. But Mike Phelan is the experience behind that. Ollie is inexperienced, he's new to the job. It's a big job. And, and he, he definitely believes he can do it. But Mike Phelan's done that assistant role and he and he takes a lot of pressure off Ollie and he gives him a lot of experience. He is fundamental to that job. I would be very, very concerned if we appointed Ollie, but Mike Phelan says, I don't want to stay. He has to stay. He's absolutely imperative to that. He's been very important to that. And let's not forget as well, McKenna, Carrick are very inexperienced themselves, just like Ollie. So having Phelan, he's like the glue. That, that, he's that experienced glue that brings them together. So Mike Phelan is essential. And I'm 100% convinced he will be appointed assistant manager as well. Why would he walk away? I think he's absolutely loving it. He never should have walked away. He never should have been going when Sir Alex Ferguson left as well. Um, massively important to United. Uh, Nathan Kerr says maybe Mike Phelan will be director of football. Um, I think it would be a shame to lose Mike Phelan as the assistant manager for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because, yeah, he'd be a good director of football, but you'd lose that experience on the bench. And then you've got Solskjaer and Carrick. And I just think Carrick is learning on the job as much as Ollie is. So it'd be very important to keep Phelan there. Uh, Pamenda Dillon says Ollie at the wheel chant. Marcus Rashford, Mank, born and bred. I know it's not, but I always hear that. Love the channel and United. Can't wait for next year. Well, I, I, look, this is football. This is football. Can't wait for next year, but enjoy the now. Enjoy today. Enjoy tomorrow and enjoy Watford and enjoy Wolves and enjoy Barcelona. Enjoy West Ham. Enjoy Barcelona. Enjoy Chelsea, Man City. Enjoy now. Enjoy the summer. Enjoy next season. Like every day for the next hopefully three years, is going to be exciting at Manchester United. It never stops. We never sleep. You know, 9am today, Solskjaer is the manager of Manchester United. Four o'clock, he's doing a press conference. Tonight, it's the United Stand at eight o'clock. Tomorrow morning, it's press conference for the Watford game. Tomorrow night, it's United Stand at eight o'clock. Saturday, match. You know, it never stops. Into the summer, transfer daily. Talk about transfers. Whoa, it's really exciting. It's, it never stops. But the reality is we've got stability and we've got excitement around the club. And that that's the most important thing. It really is. And we are excited now. Of course we're excited now. Um, just, 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 just really, really, really pleased. Really, really, really pleased. And um, so, so happy that he is Manchester United manager. Uh, glory, glory, says through me vermin. Anyway, I've probably spoken enough now. Um, but make sure you smash a like on the video. This is great news. We will be live at about half four then for the press conference reaction tonight. Looking forward to that. And also, um, at lunchtime today, we're not going to not put it up. It's the United Stand FC trials video. That's going up at about midday. So keep your eye out for that. Really excited for your impact on that. We're going places. United Stand FC, United Stand Community, Manchester United. Happy days. Really excited. We've stolen Thursday. We've stolen Thursday. It's called Ole Gunnar Solskjaer Thursday. We've stolen it. Nothing else matters. Trending. Thanks for watching. Speak to you all soon.